Well, it's Friday, and it's time for our Good Friday devotion. Today's passage is the the rest of chapter 27, from verse 27 to the end. Uh, Jesus is uh, crucifixion and death. Um, there's a part of me that wants to say that this is the hardest, most gut-wrenching part of Scripture. But I don't know, every time I think of that, what I think of... Uh, I think of a different verse, uh, way long before, Genesis 6, verses 5 and 6. And, and these are connected. The cross is connected with this. Uh, those verses are, The Lord saw that humanity had become thoroughly evil on the earth, and that every idea their minds thought up was always completely evil. The Lord regretted making human beings, and he was heartbroken. Ugh. Well, with that in mind, Let's, uh, let's look at the cross. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house, and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him, put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hey, king of the Jews! After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they strict, stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found, a man, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink, but after tasting it, he didn't want to drink it. After they crucified him, they divided up his clothes among them by drawing lots. They, they sat there guarding him. They placed above his head the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified him with two outlaws, one on his right side and one on his left. Those who were walking by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, so you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself! If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the legal experts and the elders, were making fun of him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel, so let him come down from the cross now. Then, then we'll believe in him. He trusts in God, so let God deliver him now if he wants to. He said, I'm God's son. The outlaws who were crucified with Jesus insulted him in the same way. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, He's calling Elijah. One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest of them said, Let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, and then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, Oh, this was certainly God's Son. Many women were watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to serve him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. That evening a man named Joseph came. He was a rich man from Arimathea who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting in front of the tomb. 
The next day, which was the day after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. They said, Sir, we remember that while that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will arise. Therefore, order the grave to be sealed until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people, He's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate replied, You have soldiers for guard duty. Go and make it as secure as you know how. Then they went and secured the tomb by sealing the stone and posting the guard. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them through his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace draw near and bless your name. Were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small? Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all.